Hello everybody, Nitso here and welcome back to my fairy tale reaction series here on the channel. Today we are here for episodes 33 and 34. I am gonna guess moving into a new arc. Uh, it's very likely from where we left off last time. Uh, speaking of last time, we had the truth behind Loti. Loti's story, uh, or should I say Leo's story, because that's his actual name. Yeah, that was a lot. It was a very hefty reaction, um, you know, minus the, the first episode, which was just what the fuck. But like, episode 31 and 32 were damn, <laughs> especially episode 32. Good ass episode, but it was a pretty heavy episode. I, I love, I just love the, the Lucy Loti dynamic in that episode. It really shows how much Lucy actually cares for her friends and like, all the magic power she used just to prove a point to the spirit king, summoning all of her celestial spirits at the same time. And hey, Lucy uh, did get something out of, you know, the whole Phantom Lord, Loti, whatever uh, drama. She got a new celestial spirit, a new Zodiac key, Leo, obviously. Um, and I know, I, I just, I looked it up after the reaction, I know uh, now which of the um, signs that was missing. It was Pisces. So, uh, Lucy now has Virgo, Taurus, Sagittarius, Aquarius, Leo, and uh, Cancer, right? So that means she's missing Libra, Scorpio, Aries, Capricorn, um, Pisces, and I know I'm forgetting the last one. God damn, I counted them all last time. Gemini, there you go. <laughs> I got them all. So she's missing those six. We already know what Aries looks like because we saw it in the Flash of Karen. So that still leaves uh, five more Zodiac spirits to discover. Very excited. And we'll get a new one in this upcoming arc. Uh, which, let's talk about that. So we ended uh, off episode 32 with uh, Loki giving everyone like these tickets to like a beach vacation, which was fun. Uh, but then we had this very ominous, foreboding ending line of Lucy where she talked about Urza's smile you know, like, fading away, and then we cut over to this weird, very weird place, and this episode is called the Tower of Heaven, so I'm assuming whatever weird tower thing we saw is the Tower of Heaven, and it's very easy to assume immediately with the connection to Heaven and Earth and Urza, that this is going to be Seed Rain stuff, so I am very excited to see, because Seed Rain has been, like I said, I said this last time, Seed Rain has been built up to be shady since episode 10, but especially in Deluna, when we had the whole old tier stuff, uh, I haven't rewatched that scene. I rewatched that scene like a few weeks ago when I rewatched Aluna, and I don't remember the full context of it. I just remembered him talking about you know some sort of evil plans. You know, Ulti was working with him, and he had some sort of book that said something about heaven and earth. Uh, and also, Happy at the end of last episode said something about heaven and earth in the little like post episode little scene with the Chibis. So we're gonna most likely move into some new stuff right here. I think we were starting off with the, the beach rotation stuff, though, because I had to test the audio, and we're definitely at a beach right now, so that's, uh, we're gonna, I guess we're going to start off lighthearted in this episode. Uh, also, I get to watch opening 3 and ending 3, finally, in this reaction. Uh, not this episode, but the next episode, episode 34, I'm going to be watching the opening and the ending for the first time. Uh, and maybe even the last time, I don't know when the new opening starts, but I'm assuming it's going to be either episode 35 or 36. Just if I were to have to guess, if they're all like 12, 13 episodes long. They really should have just made this easy by just making just like opening three played for most of Phantom Lord. Just had it just have it include the Phantom Lord stuff. And if an opening starts playing at the beginning of an arc, they made it cover the stuff that is in the arc and not like in the next arc, because I'm assuming that's what's gonna happen. Cause that's what happened with opening two. It was playing throughout essentially all of Deluna and only like three, four episodes of Phantom Lord, and they included all the Phantom Lord stuff in it. So I don't know what A one was thinking, but what can you do? Uh, I think it's A1 that animated this. I'm not actually 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it is. Whatever. Let's jump into it now. Um, I'm excited. Full ration is going to be in the description down below. I, you can, there you go. You can click down there, and there will be two links, but you can click on one of them. Well, both of them will take you to a different redirect site, where you can watch the full uncut reaction, and then once the reaction for uh, episode 33 is done, you can come back here to YouTube for my discussion portion. Yeah, let's uh, jump into it. Fairy tale episode number 33 in 3, 2, 1, let's go.
So that was Fairy Tale episode 33, The Tower of Heaven. And they just dropped a lot of information on me. Okay. So, Urza was a slave. Uh, she helped some weird, I'm just going to say cult for now, some weird people, uh, help build the Tower of Heaven. I don't know what it is or what its purpose is, but it's very weird and it's very large. Um, she, was a, she was a slave, alongside with some other kids, uh, Miliana, Wally, Sho, Simon, and Jalal. Jalal now seems to be heading this Tower of Heaven project. Jalal is also Seed Rain, which is interesting. Um, <laughs> so I do wonder, is that literally just Seed Rain, or is it like a clone of him, or is it like... I mean, they have the exact same art, it cannot be a different person, it has to be something like that. Or maybe the maybe Seed Rain is a clone of Jalal? Just how does one be in the Era Magic Council and then have still time to be over there and do all of that, right? There has to be but we even saw him like this this can only be like maybe two, three days or something at Max after Matroff's trial. Because Seed Rain was there at his trial. Unless that is that I mean, we saw him already listen to Hologram in that episode ten. When Urza was being uh, trialed, there was already a hologram of him like there, or like a projection, right? So maybe Seed Rain is really just one of those, but maybe like a, a stronger one. I have no idea. I'm not sure how this man can. I, I don't know if he literally just went to that place and like keeps switching between them, but wouldn't that be a bit weird to the other council? Where does this man keep going? Huh. Okay. I also do wonder, we didn't see Ult here at all this episode. I'm not sure. I, I actually don't know. Is it is it the same person? I would assume so. The marking is the same. <sighs> Alright. And or is this apparently going to be a sacrifice? A living sacrifice? I need... Uh, hold on. I'm going to look exactly what Jalal said because I didn't quite... I need to look at that conversation I didn't. He had with that other guy with the hair. Hold on. That one guy with the hair. Lord Jalal, I'm here to report that they've captured Urza and are heading here now. However... Why have you let that traitor live until now? With your magical power, you should have been able to dispose of her easily. Well, that wouldn't do. What did he say? The world would be too boring? Would be too boring a place. However, now that the Tower of Heaven is complete, allowing her to live would cause issues. The time has come. You will become a living sacrifice to our aspiration, Urza Starlet. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure what that means. But we're trying to find out. <laughs> well, with that being said, let's move on to the next episode. I'm very intrigued to see where this is going to go. And we can finally watch the opening and the ending uh, now for episode 33. So let's jump into it. Fairy Tale, episode 33, 34. I said 33 just now. So 34 and 3, 2, 1. Let's go. So that was Fairy Tale episode 34 titled Jalal. Alright, so we have uh, gotten the full Urza batch story with Jalal and everything now. With the escape tunnel and everything. I I do wonder what happened to Jalal. Because it looked like there was like, some weird, like, like, I don't know, some like, ominous stuff floating around him when he started to like, smile creepily. I'm assuming he got possessed by something. Here's a here's a an idea I just got. What if? Because this R this revival system, this R system, is they're using this auto revive on person. And the best case I have for that person is Zeref. Um, because they all these guys are evil, and Zeref apparently was evil. You know, this this dark mage that made all this. I mean, he made the lullaby and stuff, so you know he's uh. Not a, a good guy. So that's the best guess I have. What if he? What if this? What if that part of Zeref is already possessing Jalal, and he's like controlling him so he would finish the R system so he can like fully be revived. You know, and then do bad stuff. I am so confused with the situation regarding uh, Jalal, and then also Seed Rain and Ultir, because they they said that. Jalal is Cedrin's twin brother, which is interesting, but why would they have the same mark? 
Like on the the marking on the face, where did that come from? What does that mark even mean? What is its purpose? I don't know. That's kind of confusing. Is it really his twin brother? How did one of them end up being a slave and the other one end up being part of the era fucking magic council? That also doesn't make that much sense to me. Who are their parents? Like, on what is the thing with what is like the thing with Olds here and like they're but they're like evil, right? I was I would assume so. They say that fairy tale is a problem. And like this weird, I don't know, I have to rewatch that scene in Deluna one more time, um, between Oltir and uh, Seedrain, to see what they were actually talking about, and the whole context behind that scene. Uh, I mean, they were like, Oltir, I mean, you know, Zalti, whatever, she was like even spying on Leon and all the others on Deluna, like they were, there's some, there's so much stuff happening, and I can't figure it out, it's, it's like the same feeling I have, like before the whole Loti reveal, I don't know what's going on, I'm so confused. Oh, man, I'm sure it's gonna be revealed during this arc, and if it's not, then it's probably gonna be revealed in the future. Uh, but right now, I, I, I honestly have no idea what the whole Seedrain Jalal situation is. Is it just that they're twin twin brothers? But, like, that seems so, like, out of left field, just out of nowhere, and then, like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. The best case I have right now is that the R system is to revive Zeref. Uh... And yeah, that's and that maybe Zeref is already kind of possessing Jalal and using him as like a physical vessel, kind of until he can like maybe get his real body back or something. I don't know. I would be interested to see what this Zeref fellow is all about, though. I didn't expect to, you know, get this story about this uh, uh, Zeref fellow so early on. I was expecting that to, just this show is three hundred episodes long, and I'm assuming that he's going to be the final villain just from the way that they build him up. So I wouldn't expect him to be, like, already, like, such a big focus. Like, they're, they're literally trying to revive him, like, the sixth arc or whatever this is. Hold on. Wait. Um, we have, like, the first four episodes, so that's an arc. I don't know what that arc would be. I just, like... Well, I guess the first two episodes are different as well. And that's just, like... Okay, so, so like, the real arcs. We have, um, Lullaby, Galuna, Phantom Lord, then, I guess, the low-team mini arc, and now this. So, like, the fifth, sixth, or seventh arc, I guess, whatever... Um, and they're already focusing super heavily on, I'm assuming, and then this is just a guess, I'm assuming Zeref. Because uh, I don't know who else it would be, but I could just be Ron, and I could, this could just be all just proven like, in the next episode, when we reveal who they're trying to revive. But I think since you know this whole cult is very evil, and Zeref seems to be evil, I'm assuming they're trying to revive him. Uh, I also need to rewatch the beginning of this episode with the council, when they talked about like all the towers and stuff, because they didn't quite get all of that. I was a bit, you know... Still confused by all the stuff that happened in the previous episode, um, but by the time I watch the next episode, I think I'm gonna. Um, I'm actually gonna watch those today, probably still. But I, I'll have I'll have looked at that Luna scene again and have rewatched this uh, the first scene of this episode just to maybe get a better grasp on what's actually happening. Because I'm a little I'm a little confused right now. But the, it's the beginning of the arc. That's I guess that tends to happen. I was also trying to confuse the beginning of the Luna when the villagers told a fairy tale they have to destroy the moon. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to leave off this reaction right here. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, you can obviously like the video. I would highly appreciate it. You can also subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my content in the future. Um, next fairy tale reaction will be episodes 35 to 36. Those will be up very soon. Uh, you can also comment down below if you want me to if you want to recommend me shows to react to in the future or if you want to just talk about this show. No spoilers, please. And, uh, yeah, uh, with that being said, Thank you guys so, so much for watching. This is not a signing out. Goodbye, everyone.